Uh, could somebody please lead us with a word of prayer? Father, we come to the throne of grace, Lord. Thank you for this day, the weekend we have been starting, Lord. The day you have given us, Lord. Thank you for everything. As we are going to learn from your word, Lord, about the authority you have given us, Lord, about the position, Lord, in the earth, about the Lord, about the demons, Lord, everything we are going to learn about, Lord, that it should be added to our knowledge and should be used for the kingdom expansion and all glory be given to you, Lord. Thank you for the teacher, Lord. Thank you for all the students we are present here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Sudkenu, for leading us uh, in that word of prayer. We will um, get into the same topic that we were studying in our last class. We were looking at the various tactics or schemes of the devil. Uh, okay, so we've touched on a couple of them, but we have to complete the others. Um, so in the last class, I think we have done opposition. I'll just go to that. And we saw how Satan opposes the purposes of God. It could be in various ways. Uh, he could do so through the circumstances. He could do so through, um, you know, engaging in, in, um, uh, many of like continuing to put certain thoughts and suggestions in our minds so on and so forth so we talked about the fact that we need strategies okay from god to overcome what the enemy is doing against us the greatest st strategy which we have already discussed and we saw the dream right that pastor has uh, jotted down here in our notes that the cross is the greatest strategy of God to overcome the enemy. So we need God's strategy. We need to engage with the weapons of our warfare because we have a spiritual enemy. Uh, we don't have a, um, a human enemy, isn't it? So we have to use the weapons of our warfare which are also spiritual in nature against the enemy so as we depend on the lord as we hear from him we will be in a better position to come against the opposition that he is bringing into our lives bringing into our works the next one here is deception and i think we talked enough and we talked quite elaborately in the last class about uh, the tactics of the devil deception is uh, what satan uh, uses to trap people okay so he wants to get people to consider a lie as the truth okay so when that happens people will you know stay away from the truth they will not recognize the truth they will ignore the truth and obviously you know scripture says that you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free so what does a lie do a lie keeps us in bondage and satan uses this tactic of deception uh, upon the lives of the people he wants people to continue to believe that lie the best example for us is back in the garden of eden itself when the scheme of satan was using deception and unfortunately, the first man and the first woman, they believed it. Okay. So uh, deception means getting us to believe a lie as a truth. Okay. And thereby face the consequences of that. And we see several scriptures that talk about Satan corrupting our minds, you know, uh, through these lies. And also, increasingly, as the days pass by and we are closer to the return of Jesus, 
not only do we have this kind of deception in a um, in an individual level but scriptures also talk about deceiving teachers you know it talks about people who will deceive many uh, so there can be you know communities deceived at the same time uh, if they are not holding on to the truth of god's word so what is the antidote or what should we do so that we don't get into deception the best thing is to know the truth of god's word to have that rightly divided word of god working in our lives so it's going to take study of god's word a deep understanding of god's word so whatever a deceiving thought comes to us or a lie comes to us we are able to recognize this is like uh, the currency notes uh, whichever country uh, we belong to i'm sure in your country you ha you have the original currency notes and because they are precious what happens people also they print counterfeit notes but there is whenever um, you you are taught you know to uh, recognize the counterfeit notes you know the uh, you're not taught to go and study maybe there are let's say 100 types of counterfeit notes out there you're not taught to go and study all those 100 counterfeit notes instead you know what every government teaches or every uh, country would do is to equip the people in the right way to recognize the original you know that is sufficient if you know the original really well then you'll be able to recognize you know, any form of counterfeit currency um, that you know you come across so in the same way when it comes to the truth of god's word when we know the word of god really well no matter what kind of deception it is you know, you're able to recognize it easily and that is the reason why we all need to be rooted and grounded in the word of god you know sometimes what happens uh, we as believers we just think that um, listening to sermons is good enough for us or um, you know listening to some online teachings is good enough for us um you know uh, listening to a particular um, bible teacher who maybe they come home and they share the god's word share god's word with us and encourage us so that is enough but scriptures tell us that every individual right you need to have the word of god richly a rich deposit of god's word in your heart and that is not possible unless we take time and meditate in god's word so to overcome the devil's deception every believer must be encouraged to personally individually spend time in god's word okay and yes in order to understand it better you can listen to sermons you can you know read some um, uh commentaries you can you can do all of those things in order for you to understand so each individual studying god's word and keeping god's word uh, in their hearts is crucial um, also because we have an enemy who uses a tactic called as deception one will slip into deception if they are not well aware of the truth of god's word okay so what should we do to counter deception very simple know the truth know the truth the truth will set you free know the truth it will keep you strong in god the other important thing that you and i can do to escape deception is also to have to recognize the work of the holy spirit in us okay in our notes here the passages have been uh, you know given for us again 1 john 2 this is 26 and 27 is mentioned um the bible says that the holy spirit or the anointing of god who dwells in us will 
teach us all things. Okay, that simply means he can give us the discernment of what is right and what is wrong. So sometimes we can listen to a teaching and we might sense in our spirit that something is not correct. You know, everything looks good in what is being taught on the outside, but you sense deep within your spirit where the Holy Spirit could be bearing witness with our spirit to really examine what you are hearing, to really go back, excuse me, and study before you accept what is being taught. So we have to have a rich deposit of God's word and also be sensitive to the impressions of the Holy Spirit. Stay away from deception. So any thoughts about deception, any questions about deception before we move on to the next topic here, which is about oppression. Okay, so I just want to pause for a few moments. Okay, so uh, if there are no questions, let me add another thought. Uh, I've heard this said, you know, the devil never comes with horns and, uh, you know, a tail and a pitchfork. And uh, he never comes like that to introduce himself and say, hello, you know, my name is uh, the evil devil. Nice to meet you. But if he comes like that, we would all know and be cautious. And you know, be uh, ready to counter his tactics. But how does he generally work? In very subtle ways. Okay, so he's he is happy when we're not alert, and which is why we read in one Peter chapter five: be sober, be vigilant. The adversary, your devil, is like a roaring lion, you know, seeking whom he may devour. So he's very subtle and. Uh, only an alert believer can catch him. So when it comes to deception, you know, the, here's the other thing. And in fact, it's applicable to all the other schemes of the enemy. Everything begins very simple, very subtle, you know, something very small. You know, yeah, you can do it. It's okay. It, it, nothing will happen to you. And if you're not careful enough, you get into it. And then you slip a little more and a little more and a little more. And that's how Satan gets, you know, even well-informed believers. So uh, the point is, be alert, be strong in the word, be filled with the spirit, be fired up so that every time, even in the most subtle ways, when Satan says, yeah, yeah, it's okay, you know, you can miss... Uh, what is their prayer? What is their worship? You know, it's okay. You can catch him at that point and say, no, no, no. I will not get into this deception because little by little, it leads us away from God. So um, always remember that, you know, the way in which Satan will work is very, very subtle. Okay. And so we have to catch him at that. Now let's move on to the next tactic here, which is oppression. I already mentioned to us that oppression means to subdue. Okay, in a wrestling match, if you have seen the stronger one literally, you know, pouncing on uh, the, the weaker person and sitting on them or something like that, that is oppression. Where one is too weak under the weight of the oppressor. So Satan works in this way. No, wrongfully, he tries to overpower us, subdue us. What are the things that he uses? He'll use depression. Again, it's very subtle ways. Could start, start with a few sad thoughts here and there. But if we are not careful and if we keep entertaining, right, uh, it goes from normal to abnormal. Now, many of these emotions uh, could be normal. Normally, it's we need to have some fear. 
you know, when you're crossing the road, you have to look both ways and then cross. That is normal level of fear because uh, it's wisdom. However, when it goes beyond that, beyond the normal level of, let's say, sadness or uh, fear or any such, you know, normal uh, emotions become uncontrolled that can cause oppression in our soulish realm okay similarly you know maybe some thoughts in our uh, in our soul in the area of our mind uncontrollable you know we talked about weaknesses right we said pride lust jealousy bitterness um uh, unforgiveness you you just overwhelmed by thoughts that keep playing in your mind so how are you feeling at that point you know you feel oppressed as if there's a weight on me how can i how can i get this off of me so that is the way in which satan will try to oppress us we also see in acts chapter 10 and verse 38 can somebody read that verse please acts 10 and verse 38 Acts chapter 10 verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, uh, another version also says all who were oppressed of the devil. Okay, so he went about doing good. He was also delivering those who were under oppression oppressed of the devil now we know that the devil can oppress us in the soulish realm but he can also oppress us in our physical realm so there can be <laughs> excuse me some ailments some diseases even some so-called incurable diseases you know, which manifest in our physical body that are actually the oppression of the devil. If you recall Luke 13, you know, um, Jesus goes and he uh, sets a woman free. She's all, she's all bent over. But you know, when, when he says, you know, woman, thou art loosed, you are free now. And he casts out that spirit from her, what happens? The spirit of infirmity, she straightens up. Okay. So, yeah, this is a case of possession, but I'm telling you, look at the effect of a demon power. It also affected her physical health. So, demons can affect our health. Okay. There can be oppression, if not possession, there can be oppression in the area of our health as well. So there are times when you know we can recognize that this is demonic. This is not natural. There are re natural reasons why we can be ill, but there can also be demonic reasons. Okay, So uh, there can be health issues that one faces because of demonic oppression. Now, when we recognize it, we have to deal with it through spiritual warfare. You know, when we break those strongholds, when we you know, break the influence of the um, uh, powers of darkness, then the person can experience freedom. Okay, so uh, another point which we can add here when we talk about oppression is that when one is oppressed, okay, and in the case of deliverance, when we uh, engage in delivering such people, even though they are not possessed, sometimes we can see manifestations. Okay, Remember, I mentioned to us that a believer can never be possessed by a demon spirit. So what happens to a believer? A believer is, you know, he is oppressed. Okay, uh, the demon spirit can influence 
the parts of the person without being in the person. And when we are engaging in deliverance, even of an oppressed person, sometimes there are physical manifestations. You would look at that individual and it will look like they are possessed. Okay, they will be acting like they are possessed. Um, there'll be all those, you know, physical, there'll be like a physical evidence. But just because there are physical manifestations, it does not mean that a person is always possessed. They could also just be oppressed and yet having physical manifestations. Okay, so just something you can note it in your mind. All right. Uh, so yeah, so that is about oppression that the enemy brings. Now, moving on to possession. What I'll do is I'll keep continuing. If you have a question or, or something, you just stop me. Um, you can unmute yourself and ask and then, you know, we'll deal with that question. So here we are looking at the next uh, method of the enemy, which is possession. Again, please note that things like possession, okay, really, it requires an open door for the devil. So it's only when there is access that the enemy can do things like this, you know, possession. Uh, we've also seen in some cases, there is a consistent progression. You, know, you move from influence to oppression to possession to you know domination, empowerment. So an individual can allow or give ground to the enemy to go to this level of possession. So what happens in possession? In possession, very clearly, the faculties of the individual are taken over by demon spirits. So again, we know that a human being is three parts, tripartite being. You have spirit, you have soul, you have body. In case of an unbeliever, what does the demon do? The demon can come in. But in the case of a believer, who lives in the spirit of a believer? The Holy Spirit. So you cannot have a demon in the spirit. But coming to the areas of the soul, mind, will, emotions, all that, those faculties can be, you know, you can use the term hijacked, completely hijacked. Even the body, what are the faculties? You know, you have your, your vocal uh, ability to speak or your expressions, your bodily abilities, your strength and things like that. So hijack you know, the faculties of the human being. Uh, so in the case of possession, you would see manifestations, you know, commonly. Uh, and I told us in the last time that uh, these manifestations can either be ongoing okay where you have completely you know completely the person is taken over by the demons so the uh, person with the demons legion right the possessed man of gatherings we know that he was excommunicated because of the constant state of violence rebellion and you know just being antisocial Okay, and he was possessed by demons. So there were many, many behavioral changes in him, uh, which he couldn't control. And the whole time he was like that. So one can have the manifestation, you know, in an ongoing way, or you can have manifestations in a sporadic way, meaning it comes and goes. So, you know, you read about this uh, uh, parent, right, who comes to Jesus and says, there is a spirit tormenting my child and, uh, you know, he gets thrown into the fire, he gets thrown into the water. So on and off, something unusual is happening to the child, not constantly but here and there so there can be sporadic manifestations as well so if one is possessed it does not mean that you know the whole time they will look possessed no manifestation can be 
uh, in either way. All right. So that is about possession of demon spirits. Now, moving further, you know, into the control of these demonic spirits, one can come to the state of domination. What is domination? Domination is also, you could say, a form of uh, empowerment that these demon spirits you know, provide to a human being. So you can have uh, people who through the demon spirits dominate or influence over. Now, it's not just them. You know, their faculties are already hijacked by the demon spirits. But now they are being used like a, you know, like an instrument to influence villages, towns, cities, nations, and you know, larger uh, geographical regions. Um, can somebody quickly read for us Revelation 2 verses 12 and 13? Revelations 2, 12 and 13. Mm -hmm. To the angel of the church in Pergamum write, yeah. These are the words of him who has the sharp tablet sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne, yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, even in the day of Antipas, my faithful witness, who has put, who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. Yeah, thank you, John. So, you know, you see there a sense of control over an entire city. Satan lives there how could satan have lived there you know he has gained domination over an entire region and it could be in this manner that you know you have uh, he has his people okay who whom he is influencing through so this can happen there can be uh, people who act as the representatives of the kingdom of darkness because they have moved on from a place of possession into a place of domination. Cities, regions can be controlled. Uh, and, you know, in, in the word of God, there are um, individuals that have been mentioned through whom Satan was able to propagate his work and influence you know large groups of people jezebel is one good example in the book of kings first and second kings when you study about elijah elisha you know even elijah he faced a very real spiritual opposition and we generally associate it you know with the spirit of jezebel so what is the spirit of jezebel Jezebel was the ruling woman at that time, you know, Ahab and his wife Jezebel. The thing about Jezebel is Jezebel had many sorcerers, magicians, you know, people engaging in witchcraft, uh, black magic, you know, those kind of people under her. And through them, she created this whole power to dominate okay, uh, through those spirits. So she basically worked through those demon spirits um, and gained control over the region. And we, we see a real spiritual opposition you know, that uh, came against Elijah as well. You know, remember, uh, there were prophets of Baal who challenged Elijah, but you know, ultimately uh, God showed himself strong and at some point you know elijah even got depressed because why is he getting depressed he's not in any kind of a physical battle depressed and also tired because he was fighting a spiritual battle and he knew that there is this opposition coming from the spirits of jezebel okay, they were if you again you know study a little more you'll understand the spirit of jezebel simply means there is a type right uh, in the activities that they engage in. So 
a lot of control, uh, manipulation, intimidation, causing fear, those, those kind of activities. Uh, so whenever we say spirit of Jezebel, we mean those kind of spirits, manipulating spirits. Okay. So, but who was the key person through whom all this was going on? You know, it was thriving under Jezebel. Uh, similarly, you, know, you have accounts of other individuals through whom uh, such things happened. There's a mention of a Manasseh, ruler of uh, Jerusalem, uh, through whom Again, you know, such demonic influence was possible in uh, Samaria. Uh, in Acts chapter eight, you read about Simon the sorcerer. Okay, and uh, you know, talking about Simon, you it, it also says that people called him God. He's just a human being, but it's possible that he was performing signs, wonders, miracles among the people. And there was supernatural power that was being demonstrated through the life of Simon. Now, how did that happen? It's not just possession. You see, person is already subject to the demonic uh, powers. There's more. The person has become a source or a channel of influence. So, Others are also, you know, sort of beginning to uh, recognize, acknowledge, and, you know, who knows, maybe there were people who were worshipping um, this kind of uh, power that they were seeing among them. So Simon the sorcerer, another uh, person who demonstrated the domination over Samaria. But, you know, wonderful thing is he accepted Christ. And, you know, another wonderful thing I'll add here is when he saw the miracles and the you know the power of the holy spirit when john and peter they were sent to samaria uh, to minister the baptism in the holy spirit to the people when he saw that the holy spirit was being given on the laying on of hands he got excited he said give me this you know i i want what you have so it just tells us that god's power was so pure you know, so wonderful and also powerful because somebody like Simon, who was great in the demonstration of, you know, the demonic uh, power was impressed by God's power, the power of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, obviously there's no match. The powers of darkness are no match to the powers of the kingdom of God through the Holy Spirit. So that's a good thing that we see. Yet the point I'm trying to make is there can be individuals whose influence goes larger you know, upon other people as well. One more example is that uh, woman in uh, Philippi who had, you know, the spirit uh, of Python and you know, who uh, was going about uh, what do I say? Like uh, through the through, she became an instrument of the demonic powers. Okay, all right. So uh, I think we've we've had uh, enough explanation on domination, so you understand. So there can be domination over, and you notice how there are communities and cities uh, and regions that are being named, even nation. Is it possible for? somebody to have influence over an entire nation yes okay so through demonic powers they, they can exercise control over an entire nation uh, and you know it can it can look um, a certain way because of the kind of demons that are engaged so that's about domination now in the last class we also talked about um, Mm, varying levels of uh, individuals being empowered by demonic uh, spirits. Uh, now, these spirits can be spirits of various kinds. Okay? There can be various kinds. There are some references in scripture, so spirits of witchcraft and uh, familiar spirits, as we discussed just now, uh, we, we see in Acts 16. 
you know the spirit of witchcraft would somebody like to read it act 16 and verse 16 please this is again that uh, spirit of python through a woman okay i hope you all have your uh, uh, bibles with you or if you're able to access uh, online bible yes, okay yeah can you please read it superstitious possible uh, once when we were going to the place of prayer we are met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future she earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling yeah great so there we have it this lady who was able to tell the future okay uh, it's also known as you know, spirit of divination uh, and uh, i think you all asked me the question already isn't it that how can demon spirits tell the future and thankfully the same que question came up in the mentoring hour and clarified it uh, beautifully he said that they are plotting spirits they are spying spirits and thereby though they don't know the future they can gauge you know to play with our mind based on the information that they already have okay so it might seem like they know the future and i think on the e learning portal somebody had uh, posted a question for us where they said uh, they met an individual who predicted certain uh, disastrous events in their country so uh, this person came and, and and told them that you see in uh, this particular year this is going to happen and then followed by another year this is going to happen and these were all like you know some war is going to happen and some uh, uprising is going to, and it all happened so the question was how come you know an unbeliever could predict the future so accurately you see plotting is something that these demon spirits can do okay so and for all you know they might be setting it up also they might be setting up the uh, the uh, oh, violence or you know some activity like that so they are telling you that we are actually going to do it so they can't predict the future um, but this fortune telling or future telling uh, is through a spirit of divination so there can be people you know who are empowered by such spirits these are spirits of um witchcraft and uh, yeah false religion there are lying spirits that do lying signs and wonders you know, we read about that uh, in second uh, thessalonians 2 and 9 so there can be different manifestations you know as uh, human beings are empowered by these spirits but then again you know, we have to always remember no matter what kind of manifestations come through these spirits the power of god is always greater okay and uh, there are many examples think about moses and the magicians in egypt what happened moses's rod uh, turned into a snake and you know you you saw or, and it was nothing uh, nothing uh, that the magicians created they also uh, created some kind of snakes over there you know through their magic but ultimately ultimately the the snake you know, that came through moses's rod was able to gobble up the snakes that the sorcerers uh, created so basically we understand that past the demonstrations of the magicians you know moses could demonstrate greater power and authority of the kingdom of god to overpower what the enemy was actually doing so god's power is greater similarly you know elijah is your next example you know, the the prophets of baal whatever they were able to do in fact he said not only calling down fire but 
you please wet the wood okay with lots and lots of water so how easy is it for as it is calling fire from heaven and having your wood burn is a miracle it's a sign it's, you know it's, it's amazing wet wood catching fire impossible but god's power was demonstrated in a greater way now again you know, philip and the sorcerer the sorcerer in samaria could do some things but he was impressed with god's power as i told you so god's power is greater also paul and there was a sorcerer right when paul was doing his ministry there was uh, a certain person that he wanted to share the gospel with but that person was being hindered by a sorcerer you no know, elimus however you know you see finally paul rebukes him and you know he goes blind and all that but after that that individual that uh, paul wanted to minister to accepts christ okay so god's power again it's demonstrated as greater and uh, this woman in acts chapter 16 you know the fortune telling woman uh, we see that that spirit was actually cast out by paul so god's power is always greater so when we look at the demonstrations of uh, you know witchcraft and all people get very impressed they say wow if they are able to do all that then what is, where is god you know where, where is god's power but please remember even if there are some demonstrations satan can do only little bit okay to show some signs some wonders something but god's power goes beyond that and it is greater okay uh, so we must when it comes to countering this kind of uh, human empowerment we must you know pray for these people to be saved okay so first of all we can uh, pray against the spirits that are working through them uh, cast out those spirits in the case of that that lady in philippi paul simply cast out that spirit isn't it so once you do that and you engaged in engage in prayer and intercession for these people those strongholds can be broken right and then these individuals must renounce their association with the demon spirits that's the way in which you can break the power and when the power is broken the person can now once again become um, realigned to the purposes of god for their lives all right so that's a little bit about human empowerment any any questions that you may have uh, with regard to what we have been talking about domination possession or now human empowerment Okay, Sitkinu has posted a question here in the chat. Uh, he says, uh, "Wanted to know, uh, as that according to the Indian tradition, most of the Indians. Okay, my I don't want to say in the recording, but yeah, a particular, you know, belief system, and they do practice uh, their religion, uh, and they go, you know, they do their worship." they are faithful in their traditions uh, what their ancestors have taught them uh, there is a pastor friend of my father uh, in a city who lives near a certain temple and he starts his day by cursing okay uh, uh, people of another belief and cursing their place of worship uh, is it for a pastor to do so please explain okay so uh my answer sitkenu wait okay i'll just post this verse in the chat for us this is 
Division six, twelve. This is my answer. This verse says, "For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places." So, cursing a group of people. Why should we do that? We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. No, in fact, we are working. For the people, we want God's light to shine on everyone. We want people to hear the gospel. So we are here to fight demonic powers. That is point number one. Now, again, cursing that place of worship. I don't think you know you are required to do that. You, you're not. So when we talk about spiritual warfare, you'll understand. You know, led by the Spirit of God, binding, casting out, rebuking spirits, demon spirits. You know, that has a place. That has a place. Now, simply cursing a place of worship. I don't know if that does any good, Sitkenu. I hope you you've got your answer to your question. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for that Bible verse. Okay, sure. Yeah, thank you. Good. Any other any other thoughts, questions? Yeah, go ahead, Sitkenu. Ma'am, I was having one another question. Like in yeah. Old Testament, we see that Jezebel. It was already prophesied that you will die, your own people will kill you, dogs will eat your flesh like that. Yeah. And they will lick your blood. They will lick your blood. Then how that Jezebel can we still influential that today also we are saying that people are having Jezebel spirit. Jezebel spirit will do like that. So I was just thinking, how can it be like that? Yeah. Good question, uh, Sitkenu. So you see, it's not the spirit of the lady Jezebel. The lady. The, again, this question came up in our uh, mentoring hour. So human spirits, are, once a person dies, you know, they either go to, their spirit goes to heaven or hell. It's very clear cut in scripture. So you cannot have a human, the Jezebel, carrying on. Then our conclusion is Jezebel spirit is a demon spirit. Okay. And by the name, the tag Jezebel, you, you are basically understanding the activity of that class of demons. So the demons that manipulate, the demons that intimidate, you know, the demons that are spying spirits, those are called as Jezebel spirit. Okay, but it has nothing to do with the lady who died, you know, many years ago. I hope that explains things to you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, sure. Okay, so that, that's how we would uh, uh, understand that Jezebel spirit. Yeah, so uh, one uh, clarification I was thinking I will give all of us. You, know, you all had this question, can Christians also uh, move from just the state of being oppressed to influencing uh, through the demonic powers? If you open up if you give access, yes, you can become an influencer. So I was saying that, you know, that that whole aspect of, um, uh, remember I said, I've also heard that some believers, they try to gain spiritual power from witchcraft and things like that. But one more thing that I want to add here is, you see, when somebody is being disobedient to God, now we already know it's, in the Ten Commandments, we are asked to worship. You, you shall worship no other gods. So when we are sinning against God in this way, that influence will not last very long. We also read about the convicting work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Okay. Now, if someone is consistently trying to move in that direction of sin god is gracious you know he'll keep 
telling them no it's not right you can't do this it's not right for you hopefully you know people when they have a better understanding of the word and hear from the spirit uh stop those activities and come back you know otherwise moving away from god in this manner is very very dangerous okay and uh, hebrew 6 talks about it so it's it's dangerous because then you know people have this question holy spirit is dwelling inside that person how uh, can they become influencers of demonic powers and all you know one could even go to the danger of giving up their salvation you know, at that point uh, your your rejecting the holy spirit also who's dwelling on the inside of you but also please understand such instances are few uh and uh, far between because we are living in the period of grace we are living in the period of the cross where a believer who recognizes that you know he or she has sinned you know, god's grace we can confess our sins we can repent and produce the fruit of repentance and thereby you know come back to god so that opportunity also we have after the cross of jesus so the, the people who go so far away from god and reject their salvation you know that that situation arising itself is a rarity but it could happen It's, that is a danger and which is why one should not move in that direction okay so i just wanted to add that thought here uh, we are past time let's go for a break now we'll come back and pick up from where we've stopped so let's come back together at 11:02 okay 11:02 is when our class starts again thank you